Good morning, everybody. I hope that you have had an awesome week. I am very sorry that I can't be doing a Zoom call with you as I've enjoyed them so much, but I have just had so much schoolwork to do. So unfortunately, it's going to be a video for this week. Um, so in the last few weeks, we've been talking a lot about God's promises. We spoke about one regarding a rainbow. Do you remember what that was? Noah's Ark. And then we spoke about one regarding the stars in the sky. Hmm. This one was a little bit of a different one, but an important promise in the Bible. It was about Abraham, the promise to Abraham. And so last week I had asked you guys to come up with your own promises from God from the Bible. So I hope that you did that. If you did do that, hold on to them because I'm going to ask for them next week. But now we are transitioning from the first book of the Bible into the second book of the Bible. Does anybody know what the second book of the Bible is called? The first book was Genesis. Does anybody know what the second book's called? If you don't, that's okay. It's called Exodus. So today we're actually moving forward into a story that I'm sure you are all familiar with. It is the story of Moses. So a little bit of backstory as we talked about Abraham and his descendants would be multiplied and, and very fruitful. And um, so we're going into something called the Israelites. And the Israelites were a group of people who descended from Abraham and then went to Joseph and, and continuously. Remember, we talked about the family trees. So it's, um, it's a very long family tree. But basically, the Israelites lived somewhere called Egypt. I'm sure you guys may have heard of this before. You might think of pyramids. But in Egypt, there's one ruler. And the ruler is called the Pharaoh. And so basically at this time, the time of Moses, um, the Pharaoh was, a new Pharaoh came in and he did not like how quickly the Israelites were having children and how many Israelites there were because he was scared that they were going to turn on him if there was any sort of war and that they were going to have more people. And so he made this huge decree and said that any Israelite who is born, who is a boy, must be thrown into the Nile and killed and any Israelite who was born it, Hebrew is what they said but the Israelites was born who is a girl could live and so this is where the story of Moses comes in so Moses's mom was pregnant with Moses and she was had a big belly right I don't know if you guys have ever seen a pregnant woman or if your mom has ever told you about how big her belly was when you were in there but so this was Moses's mom and she gave birth to Moses but he was a boy and the pharaoh just said that any boys needed to be thrown into the Nile so she tried to hide him for as long as she could when the time came that she couldn't hide him anymore what she did was she put him in a basket and put him in the river and sent him away. What ended up happening was that Pharaoh's daughter was bathing in the water and Moses had traveled all the way in the basket to where she was bathing and she found him and she saw him and she took pity on him. And what happened is that she took him in and he eventually became her son. So Moses, who is an Israelite, who's Hebrew, was sent away so that he would not die and has now become Pharaoh's son, which is quite a big deal because obviously Pharaoh didn't know. Moses grew up within the Pharaoh's household and when he began to realize the, the, the Egyptians were treating people so horribly, they had taken the Israelites in as slaves. And so Moses had even seen somebody hitting a Hebrew, an Israelite. And Moses said, why are you doing this? Why would you do that to somebody like that? Um, they're a person. What made you think you can be in charge of everybody? And when Pharaoh heard this, he was not happy. So Moses ran away from Pharaoh so that he could live a life where he wasn't going to die, basically. So this is where it gets pretty interesting is Moses meets his wife and he's working the land when this happens. All of a sudden he sees a burning bush. Now I'm sure you guys have maybe heard of Moses and the burning bush, but if you haven't, I'm going to explain it. So Moses thinks, he sees a burning bush and thinks, I'm going to go over there and see what's going on. And so when the Lord saw that Moses had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush. He said, Moses, Moses. 
I'm reading this to you guys from Exodus 3, starting at verse 4. So that was verse 4, and now I'm going on. Um, Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. That's just a bunch of people. It's very confusing sometimes the Bible, but it's not important. So God says, and now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, the Hebrew people who the Egyptians were not being very nice to. And God says, I've seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. So what do you think is going to happen? It's pretty tricky, right? So God says, Moses, I'm sending you. And Moses goes, why the heck are you sending me, God? What's so special about me? So we're going to find out. So God had given Moses help, some signs, right? And, and Moses is like, what if they don't believe me? And God says, you, you, what's in your hand? And Moses says, a staff. A staff is like a big long stick that you walk with, right? Like a big walking stick. And God said, throw it on the ground. So Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake. So he ran from it. And then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out and took the staff into his hand. So when he reached out to grab a snake, it turned back into his staff, which God did. And so the Lord said, this is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. So these are all big things. And God sends him with a bunch of different signs. And Moses then returns to Egypt. So this is quite important. And it's a, it's a bit confusing, right? We went from Moses, who the Hebrews were being treated poorly by the Egyptians. And Moses was a Hebrew and he was sent away. His mother sent him away, right? Pharaoh's daughter found him. He grew up in Egypt and then realized that the Hebrews were being treated very poorly. So when Pharaoh found out, he ran because he was scared of Pharaoh. Moses then had his own life. He found his wife. And then God comes to him in a burning bush. And he says, Moses, listen, I, I've, I've seen this. I'm seeing what's happening and I'm sending you to go. So that's where we're at right now. And we're going to get to the point where Moses now returns to Egypt. So after Moses goes back to Egypt and tells the Pharaoh, God has sent me, the Pharaoh starts treating the Hebrews even worse. And that's where we kind of get to the point where there were plagues. And I'm not sure if you guys remembered any of this, but the Lord says to Moses, and this is in chapter seven of Exodus, that Pharaoh's heart is unyielding. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning as he goes out to the river. Confront him on the bank of the Nile and take in your hand the staff that was changed into a snake. Then say to him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews has sent me to say to you, let my people go so that they may worship me in the wilderness. But until now, you have not listened. This is what the Lord says. By this, you'll know that I am the Lord. With the staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water of the Nile and it will be changed into blood. The fish in the Nile will die and the river will stink. The Egyptians will not be able to drink its water. So this is the first thing that God is saying that he is going to prove to Pharaoh that he is real. It's the plague of blood. Next comes the plague of frogs. So seven days passed 
after the Lord struck the Nile. And so the Lord says to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, this is what the Lord says, let my people go so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will send a plague of frogs on your whole country. And so he does. Pharaoh does not let the people go and God sends a plague of frogs. Pharaoh still does not let the people go. And so God sends a plague of gnats. And gnats, you know what gnats are? Gnats are like those little, like the little bugs that are really annoying and you can never really get rid of them. So God sends the plague of gnats. Pharaoh still does not let the people go. And so God sends a plague of flies. Gross. And Pharaoh still does not let the people go. So he says he sends the plague on livestock. What that means is that the Lord says to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, let my people go so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go and continue to hold them back, the hand of the Lord will bring a terrible plague on your livestock in the field, on your horses, donkeys, and camels, and your cattle. But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of that of Egypt. So no animal belonging to the Israelites will die. So now God has done all these plagues. He's now saying that I'm going to put a plague on all your livestock. So you're not going to have a lot of food to eat. You're not going to have working animals to help you with your work. And so then Pharaoh still goes, no, I'm not going to let them go. And God then sends a plague of boils. And this one is, I don't know if you guys have ever had a boil or seen a boil. It's like a, a big um, sore on wherever let's just say your face it's this big red sore and it hurts and it doesn't feel very good and God says that I will send that on your people if you do not let my people go and Pharaoh says no I'm still not going to do it so then God sends a plague of hail and Pharaoh still goes nope I'm not going to let them go and so then God says sends the plague of locusts and locusts are like these really 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 big grasshoppers if you guys want to see what they look like you can look it up because I think they're kind of gross the next plague that God sends is the plague of darkness and finally God sends the plague of the firstborn. Now, the firstborn plague is a bit of an important one because this is the last one that God says that he is going to put on Egypt before the Pharaoh lets the Israelites go. And so Moses goes and tells Pharaoh that the Lord says about midnight, I will go throughout Egypt. Every firstborn son in Egypt will die from the firstborn son of Pharaoh who sits on the throne to the firstborn son of the female slave. But he says very importantly that there's going to be a distinction. So the people, the firstborn of Egypt, are going to die, but not the firstborn of the Israelites. And so this is where the Passover kind of comes from, which is another kind of different thing. But basically, we're going to skip to the end of this because we will go into more detail. But what ends up happening is that Pharaoh lets the Israelites go. And so Moses and the Israelites start on their journey. And then what happens is that Pharaoh ends up actually chasing them out. So the Israelites and Moses are walking and Pharaoh is coming to chase them out. It's kind of like, like a chase scene in a movie. It's pretty scary. Moses is pretty worried about the people, but he knows that God is on him. So Pharaoh chases them and chases them and chases them until they get to something called the Red Sea. So, I don't know if you guys have heard of the Red Sea, but this is the big part of uh, the story of Moses, is that God, through Moses and his staff, they get to, the Israelites get to the sea, and the Egyptians are behind them, and this is the only way to go. They can't go through the sea, they can't go around it, they can't go over it, they need to get through it. And so Moses takes his staff in his hand and puts it down and parts the Red Sea, and the Israelites walk across it. And when the last Israelite walks across that opening of the Red Sea, God floods it again. And so this is the story of Moses, which is a very long, very detailed story, but it's a really amazing story. And it's another one of God's promises is God says that he is going to save those Israelites. He says that he is going to help Moses, that he's going to be there and guide him. And he does. So for the craft this week, what I want you guys to do is I want you to draw a picture of what you think the parting of a sea looks like. So what do you guys think it looked like when we have a sea, right? With water and it's full of animals and it's full. What do you think happens when all of a sudden that sea parts in two? 
and leaves a whole area for people to walk through. And next week, I want to see that. And I want to see what you have found about God's promises in the Bible on our Zoom call. I hope you guys have an awesome week. Bye.